Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Tips and Tricks for Landscape Photography with me, Joshua Snow, and on episode 8 I'm going to show you how I like to use some of Lightroom's masking tools. There's been a lot of updates over the last year or two that have really made Lightroom a much more powerful tool in my personal landscape photography post-processing, and so I'm going to show you a few ways how I like to use them um, maybe a little bit differently than you might have seen and take full advantage of all of the tools that we have within Lightroom now. So stay tuned. Hopefully you guys will pick up some fun little nuggets along the way. All right, everybody, so I'm in Lightroom Classic. Uh, this is the latest update um, as of November 17th, 2024. Who knows, Lightroom makes new updates all the time. Um, but today I just wanna show you how I use some of Lightroom's masking tools. There's been a lot of advancements in the last year or two that have really made it a much more powerful tool. And uh, it's still not as powerful as Photoshop, but if you're the type of person that likes to take your photos as far as you possibly can in Lightroom, this video might be for you. And so the first thing I like to do when kind of attacking any landscape shot when you've got intense light in the sky is to just kind of target the sky. And Lightroom has this great new, not new, it's not super new, um, but a select sky feature. Um, but you'll notice, especially on scenes like this, where you've got a lot of snow on the peaks in the background, or if you've got some bright reflections in the background, like on the beach or at the ocean, um, you might notice that the sky selection tool doesn't do a very good job. It over selects a lot of the time, and that's because it's based on luminosity values. And so if we look really close, kind of at these mountain peaks, you'll see that red overlay really kind of over selects into the mountains. Um, a real simple way to remedy that is to simply click these three little dots and intersect this mask with itself. And that's just going to kind of restrict that mask a little bit more. And you see that it pulls back that red overlay just to the edge of the horizon. And so that's how we're able to get a nice clean selection of that sky that we can then use to pull the exposure down and make everything feel a little bit more evenly lit. Okay, so what if we want to do the opposite? There's no tool in here that says select landscape. And so if we wanna make a nice clean selection of the landscape, we're gonna do the same exact thing. We're gonna select sky, except this time we're gonna right click and we're gonna invert the mask. So now we have a very clean selection of the landscape and that's really useful for when we want to do things like lift exposure or add contrast separately from the sky. Um, steering away from global adjustments where those targeted or those adjustments kind of affect every pixel in the image. I like to break it apart into these little chunks so we're doing targeted selections and that really helps in maintaining or building in some dimension into the image. Now. Personally, I like to do a lot of vignette-like things, um, but I don't like the vignette tool. I find it pretty restrictive. Um, and a lot of times the vignette tool just darkens things that it, and, and I don't like that. So uh, I like to use gradients to do this and a linear gradient from the bottom pulled up uh, kind of up to the mountain peaks. Uh, if you imagine that this gradient is laying down flat on the earth, uh, more of this effect is going to be present at our feet and it's going to kind of taper off as the scene gets further away from us. And so we can build in a lot of um, contrast and clarity and texture and sharpness in the things that are closer to us um, and let that taper off to the background so that we get a little bit more depth and dimension. But what if we don't want to affect the dark pixels or the very brightest pixels in that image or in that area. It's very easy to simply click on these three little dots or right click your mask and say either intersect with, add, or subtract. What if we want to subtract um, the darkest pixels in the image? Personally, I find the add and subtract functions a little bit confusing. If they just simply stuck with intersect, I feel like we could accomplish most of the things that we want to do without it being as confusing. Um, so personally, I like to use intersect. And if I want to isolate specific tonal ranges from a mask, from a gradient, from a brush, from a radial gradient, I will go into intersect with, and then we will use the luminance range. You can also do this with color if we want to target these yellows specifically. 
Uh, maybe we'll try to do that next. But if we want to remove some dark pixels from this selection, we can simply go to the left side of this luminance range slider. It's set up just like our histogram with darks on the left and brights on the right. So if we start sliding this over, you'll see that red overlay starts to disappear in those darker pixels. And that's exactly what I want in this particular case, because I want to be able to um, brighten certain luminance values without affecting other ones. And so I'm, I'm playing with these sliders here because once you get them to split, you can get a very nice feathered transition. We've already got some really dark pixels down in these areas, and I don't really want to affect those. I don't want to brighten them. I want to maintain that contrast. And so I'm trying to filter some of those out of the selection so that we can come down here and lift the exposure of just the brighter pixels, mostly, um, you know, the, the things that are considered mid-tones and up. And so that gives us a nice uh, selection of just those tones. What if we want to attack just a color? Let's say we grab a radial gradient and we go over here and we target these trees. Well, what if we don't want to make everything within that gradient bright or more saturated? We can, of course, intersect this with a color range. And so when I say intersect with, this just means combine with. Um, so when I go over here to this color range, you see I have a little eyedropper tool. I can go in and I can select just the colors that I want to affect. And then I can use the option button to cut away. Oh, I'm sorry. That, that's a lie. You can't do that. Um, you can have to use this refine slider to isolate those certain colors. But look, we've been able to very quickly and very easily select those bright yellows. And now we can increase the brightness of those. We can increase the saturation of those without affecting anything else around them. And so let me just close out of this and we can kind of look at the things that have happened to this image just from a couple of adjustments. If I hit the backslash key, look at how far that image has come from just a couple of localized adjustments with gradients. Hopefully you guys are seeing some value in these tips and tricks videos. If you guys have any topic that you'd like to see covered in one of these short format, easy to digest videos, please don't hesitate to send me an email or comment in the comment section. And uh, hopefully you'll see a video on that topic someday soon. So thanks guys. See you on the next one. Thanks guys again for watching. If you found something useful in this video, please remember to like, subscribe, and share with your community. If you've pre-ordered my night photography masterclass, The Art of Night, thank you so much. It is still set to be delivered by December 5th and you will get an email in your inbox with that download link. If you haven't, go over to wildlightexposures.com right now, sign up for my mailing list and you'll get an extra $5 off the pre-order of that tutorial. Thanks guys.